Kev, it's not often you come away from a game having conceded four goals and, and still felt like you should have got something out of the game. What are your thoughts tonight? Yeah, I, like I've just said to the lads there, you, you've got to take responsibility when you lose a game of football. And, and I take the ultimate responsibility at the moment in the position that I'm in. So it was a, a poor start, I would say. I thought they started well, we didn't really get off the bus and I've got to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Um, I think that after that, once they pick themselves up, of course they gave themselves a, a mountain to climb, but they had a right good go at it. I thought they played some outstanding football. I thought they kept going. I thought from minute one, the moment I've been in this position, they've, been, uh, they've given me everything that they've got and they've been a, a credit to themselves and I've been really proud to work with them. And I thought today I'm stood on the side thinking this is just really, really good football that we're playing. Um, we had our chances and today they didn't go in, we didn't take them. And I've just said to the guys in there, I think you've, you've just learned the harsh reality of League One football. You're going to get punished more for smaller mistakes um, more so than you were in League Two. Um, the goals were very unlike us. I think there was a few little deflections that went against us, but we're normally better at defending than that. Um, but you're going to get the odd day, I think, in League One. And I certainly don't think it was a 4-2 performance. I certainly think that we were really good value for money. And I think I th we were so positive, almost too positive at 2-1 to try and go and do it. And you've got Josh Key, who's been ridiculous in his levels of athleticism and stamina and desperate to get forward and help and I've just said to him that if we lose a game of football because he's trying to drive down the middle of the pitch and win it for us I'll take it all day he is a top top guy and he's a top top player and I'm sure he'll go on having a great career um, so he was a bit disappointed but there's no disappointment for me on that sense um, we'll pick the bones out of it in terms of what we could have done better as, as staff as management and then the single biggest thing my, my biggest pet hate in football is players staring at the floor after a game that you've lost it's gone We've lost, we move on, and we've got Oxford on Saturday, and I think it's really, really important that um, the lads are in a place that they can go and, and put on a performance like this, tighten things up at the back, and, and probably take those chances a little bit more when we get a chance. It certainly felt like all four goals were probably avoidable, and when you find yourself 2-0 down so quickly, it's always a mountain to climb, but a really positive end to the first half, and, and what a great strike from Stano, that, that can't do him any harm. Yeah, uh, again, it's, a, it's always difficult when you come straight out because emotions are quite high after you've lost a game and obviously there's quite a lot going on you, you know, as an interim manager and so on. There's a huge amount have gone off in the last week, so sometimes it's quite difficult stood in, in front of a camera and, and talking, but my immediate reaction, having not seen the game back, is one of pride again. Um, Stano scored a great goal. It took the wind out of ourselves when we went 3-1 down. I think there was true belief that we were going to get something out of that game, and then the third one went in and you could almost sense a, a collective sigh of, oh. And, and it might have just been a step too far. There, there was a lot of travelling going on this week. There's been a huge amount of emotional um, energy expended with everything that's gone on. Um, but there's, there's no excuses in football, there's no time to be feeling sorry for yourself, there's no time to dwell on anything. As much as I've said after the last two games that I want the lads to enjoy winning and get ready, I want them to feel the pain, you know, the, 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 the support was crazy on a Tuesday night in London to have that many people here. They need to make sure that it hurts a little bit because fans have paid good money to come and, and be here and as much as I would hope most went away thinking that we played well, they'll be hurting that we've lost. Um, we'll hurt together tonight and then we'll wake up tomorrow and we'll get ready for Oxford and, and nothing else will matter. Football hinges on, on individual moments and if Jack Sparks' a stunning strike hits the bar, if that goes in, it's a completely different game. Yeah, we, we had chances, you know, I think Stano went through one-on-one -on -one and, and they defended it quite well, his touch wasn't quite, uh, quite right so he could get the shot off. We had really good opportunities fizzing across the box. On, on Saturday against Barnsley, we, we took those chances and those times that they had shots we blocked and they went the other way. Today, there was quite a few shots from them. You know, I think a lot of their goals came from shots that got deflected and landed somewhere that they, they weren't going. Um, the general thing about that is you just need to be a bit tighter. Um, and so it was maybe the difference of a few inches here and there. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the fact that they were pushing so hard at, at 3-1 and 4-1 down to go and score again, um, is great credit to those as characters, you know. As we said on Saturday about going and playing for the badge and that they were ready to, to go to war for as long as it took. Um, so I, I would always like to think that any team that I'm in charge of do, doesn't get beat, they just run out of time. And, and I think that was probably a little bit of that today. It certainly felt like that at the end, even after the, the, Sam's penalty, 
there was less than a minute left and they were still going for a third goal. And we all know how important goal difference can be, especially in a league like this. Every goal counts. Every goal counts. You know, the, 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 the season starts and I'm sure that in a lot of people's books that Exeter City are relegation candidates. These lads have got themselves in a position where they can be challenging at the right end of the table. I think they've got belief. I think that there is the togetherness that we spoke about the last couple of times. And sometimes it's great talking about togetherness when you've won. But I think when you've lost and you can see that they're still out there throwing themselves at it, they're still out there charging forward, they're still out there desperately trying to get that next goal, even with a minute to go, it gives me a great deal of satisfaction, despite the fact that losing a game of football, and, and certainly in the circumstances, hurts. All our attention now focuses on Oxford, like you said. You've had the opportunity to, to manage at St James Park in the Papa John's, but we all know what it's like on a league game when, when the big bank can get going. Whether that's your only opportunity this season or whether it extends beyond that, you've just got to take it in really and, and, and obviously be really proud of what yeah, you've achieved I, in the last few games. Look, I can't wait. I, I, I can't wait to be there with a, hopefully a full stadium. Um, hopefully, I think the fans, you can certainly see in the away games, they've rallied around the club, they've rallied around the players, they've rallied around me. I've been you know, genuinely, genuinely humbled by how they've been um, having a chant. The way that they've responded to me being in and around it has been fantastic. You know, I, I get asked the question all the time in terms of would I want to be here longer? Yeah, yes, they would want to be here longer. I would want more opportunity to to go on after Oxford, but I, uh, the least I'm going to do is make sure that these lads are as well prepared as they can be. Um, you know, we unfortunately there's uh, Harry uh, Smith hurt himself in the warm up, and so he wasn't really an option for me today. So we need to make sure that those little niggles and those stuff. Are, are sorted. We should have one or two back fit. Um, hopefully, there'll be a good feel about the place. You know, it's it's a loss. It hurts today, but life goes on, and I think um, a win on Saturday, sending seven or eight thousand people home happy, will be a, a, a real good thing for the end of the week. Uh, there's plenty of positives to take from today, so let's end on a positive. Congratulations to, to Matt Jay, uh, the birth of a, a baby boy this week. Um, obviously, we've missed him in the last couple of games, but it, it's a big life-changing moment for MJ, and we wish him all the best. Uh, look, I love football as much as anybody else, but there are bigger things in life than football, and, and MJ has just experienced one of the biggest. Um, it was great to hear from him this morning. I'm sure he's exhausted. Um, he's told me that he wants to train tomorrow. I'm not sure what his missus will think about that. Um, but he wants to be back involved um, and, and it'll be great at, at, to be in a position to put him on a team, team sheet for a, a home game and he will give us something, some freshness, he'll give us the ability that he's got, he'll give us the threat that he's got and the, the energy that he brings to the team and we're going to need all of that going into Saturday. Great stuff Kev, thank you.